Hey guys, Mrs. Talk Techie here, and today I kind of want to just go over some Keynote features when it comes down to creating. Because one of the cool things about Keynote is it's not just a presentation tool. And one thing I like to teach is how to create like a really neat uh, desktop, ba desktop background. I know that's not super beneficial like when it comes to teaching and learning as in the classroom, but it really helps you uh, practice and learn those uh, those skills and, and learn the different features that Keynote has to offer. And plus it's fun because at the end of it, you have a finished product uh, that you get to use and, and have it on your desktop. So this might be a lengthy uh, video, but but stick around guys. I hope you watch it in its entirety because there will be a lot of little neat tips and tricks there uh, to help you really master some uh, key skills when it comes to Keynote. So here we go. Let's get started. The very first thing is we're going to start with our Keynote and I'm working off of my uh, MacBook. So things look extremely different and are very different on your uh, on your iPad. So uh, it's best if you do work off your MacBook if you want to follow along with this. So the very first thing is I'm going to open my keynote and I have several keynotes um, going on at the same time. So uh, I apologize because I do work and make different um, things uh, always, whether it be backgrounds for my Google Sites or, or uh, instructional resources. So like I said, keynote is all uh, about creation and innovation and what you can use it for. So the first thing is we do want to set up and make it a wide uh, presentation. Let me hire my volume of my music a little bit. Um, so wide, we want to go with wide because it is a wide screen technically when we're presenting. So I'm going to go ahead and click on my wide presentation and I'm going to go and click on a, a blank one. And then uh, I just kind of want to run through a couple of things uh, on your left hand side here. This is how you view your actual slide. So if all you want is just the slide alone, then you can click on that. If um, you want all your slides, in this case, we only have one, you would do the light table, but I like to use the navigator. Um, the zooming in, right? So here you go. But really on the trackpad, I just basically hover over the the slide and I I, uh, I do this. I pinch. Some people do this. I do it with these fingers. I don't know why. Just it works for me. Um, so uh, we're not really going to be using these because we're not actually uh, building a presentation. But I do uh, use this one right here, the text, the shape, and of course our formatting, which is over here. This will always change depending on what you're clicked on, what you've selected. That's what I mean by clicked on. So if I select this text, notice this changes. If I select the slide, if I click on the slide, then it changes to how to format my slide. So always keep that in mind. If you want to add a shape and your shape is selected by these uh, white little boxes. I know that I've selected it. That means I'm formatting that and these apply to this shape. If I click on this, then now this formatting tools apply to my text. I hope that makes sense because that's one of the biggest frustrations for some of my teachers when they're working with Keynote is they, they, they never realize that you need to have it selected in order for that toolbar over here to adjust and uh, format for whatever it is that you're working on. So anyways, I'm gonna go ahead and delete all this. And the very first thing I wanna do is I wanna add a really neat background. And I always do this with my teachers. Um, so we go to Google or whatever other search uh, engine you like. And I'm gonna use the same thing I always do because I think it's super cute. Um, I'm gonna go with uh, search for black and white stripes and I can put background or something like that. I'm going to go to images and I like stripes uh, horizontal. So, um, and really this is all about kind of messing with it and taking a, a, and, and seeing what works for you. I like this one. So I'm going to see if it works. So I'm going to right click and right click is basically two fingers. 
uh, press down two fingers. I'm going to copy the image. And then I love, if you notice this little feature, what I'm doing here, I'm sending it up to my desktop. Um, this is called mission control. So, so what I do is with my three fingers, I, on the trackpad, I go like this and it kind of throws things up in order for that to work. You need to be like maximized. Your screen needs to be full screen in order for it to do that. Um, so then here, notice if I try to do it here, it doesn't go through, doesn't go up because it's not maximized. So I need to maximize it. And now notice it's up there. So I love using this feature because it works kind of like as having tabs, but you kind of move them out of the way. And if I do that again, there I have it. So um, I copied it. Now I'm going to right click and I'm going to paste. And then I'm going to see, I'm going to drag, I'm going to move it over. I'm going to drag from here because I want it to keep the constraints of it meaning I don't want it to become unproportional. And so I'm gonna go ahead and drag it and I'm gonna do that. And I kind of like the way it looks. So um, I've uh, selected the image. I'm gonna go to image over here on the right side. Um, no, I'm sorry, I'm gonna go to arrange. And this is what I meant by constraint proportions. If I remove this feature, then when I drag it, notice, I can move all this around. So if I want to keep it, say it's a perfect square and I want to keep that perfect square, then I click on those constraint proportions so that it stays as I make it, as I make it bigger, it'll stay as a, as a square and not start becoming wonky, like you know, becoming a rectangle or something like that. But uh, in this case, I kind of like the smaller stripes, maybe something like that. Let's see. I think I like them like that. So I like the way it looks right there. Next, I'm going to go back to Google and I'm gonna search for, how do you call them? Like flowers, uh, watercolor, flowers, clipboard? Let's see what comes up. No, that's not water, water, water. Watercolor. There you go. That's what I'm looking for. And uh, I like, I want to make them like in the corners for them to kind of go out like that from the corners. So I need to find something that kind of looks like this one's super cute. I think this one's the same. And I'm gonna look at it and I look at the size. Now, notice that it's black. That means this is a transparent image. So that works perfect for what I'm looking for. The only thing is I'm looking at the dimensions. It's a little small, but I'm gonna right click. I'm gonna copy it. Mission control, I'm gonna go back. And I think it's kind of cute. Now, the constraints automatically come on, notice. So, I like it, but I think it looks cute over here. So I, I'm clicked, I've selected it, I'm gonna rotate it. Let's see. I kinda like it, look, if I were to play this, um, I don't know, exit. Maybe make it smaller. How does it look smaller? No, I kind of want the for it to come out more. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy it. I'm going to paste it. I'm going to double click on it. And when you double click, then you can crop the image. And I'm going to kind of crop this here. And I'm going to crop this one about there. And then I'm going to see if I can maneuver it the way I want it. Do you guys know what I mean, what I'm trying to do here? Let's see how it looks. Mm. I don't think it's looking great. I think it's looking odd.
Oh, no, not at all, right? Okay. Command Z, Command Z, Command Z, Command Z. Uh, I don't like it. Okay. I'm going to keep that one just to see if I find another one that I like. But you guys kind of get the idea of what I'm trying to do. See, this one really does lend itself. But notice, even though it has the little squares, it is not a transparent it image. So let me copy it just so that, oh gosh. Let me copy it just so that you guys get know what I'm talking about. See, it's not a transparent image. So let me show you something really cool, a really neat trick. It's called Instant Alpha. I do have a YouTube video just on it. It's actually really short, but I can show you right now. I'm going to select that image. I'm going to click on image. And here you have this feature called Instant Alpha. And so I'm going to click and I'm going to drag my finger across my trackpad. And that's basically creating a radius of that gathers that same color and deletes it. And so now I have something like this. So let's see how that looks. That looks all right, but it looks a little cut off, right? I'm not crazy about it. So for the sake of time, I'm gonna just try to find something else. Oh, that's cute. I think I like this. So I'm gonna copy. Let's hope it looks nice doing the instant alpha since it's not a transparent image. Um, it's not a transparent image, so I'm afraid it's going to look really shoddy and, and cut up, but we'll try it out. So I'm going to put that one there, and notice what I'm going to do. I'm going to crop this. I'm going to crop this. Maybe make it a little bigger to get it out of here. No. There we go. And then I'm going to grab it. I'm going to grab this. See what I'm going to do. I'm going to double click. And now that same image is still in the background. But now I can grab and move it. And now I'm cropping another part of it. And I'm going to drag my cropped image here. And... See, I kind of like that. I could do this corner over here also if I wanted to. I could arrange it to where it's something like this instead. What do you guys think? Okay, let's see. That looks okay. For the sake of time, we're going to do that. Now I'm going to go to text and I'm going to make it nice and large. And I'm going, oops, I'm going to make sure I'm selected. This is my name. But I want it to look really cute. So I'm going to go to text and I have a whole ton of fonts. So now it's just a matter of finding like a cute font that we love. I like that font. I wish I had like gold. That's not gold. That's kind of goldish, right? So here's another neat trick that I like to use. Um, I, I'm selected on my text. I'm going to go here to the settings app. And then I'm going to add a shadow to it. You notice how it just makes it amazing. Here on that bottom section, I can offset the, the shadow. Do I want it? To, do I want the shadow to come up at the top, towards the bottom? Uh, and, and how much do I want it? That's the angle and the offset. And then even what color I'd like it to be. And so anyways, for the sake of time, let's just say that's what I like and I love it that way. And this is what I can do next. I can play it and then I can take a screenshot of it. 
So I'm going to do I'm going to do Command Shift three, Command Shift three, and it took a screenshot of my entire screen by pressing play on it. Right, I press play, and I took a screenshot. Now I'm going to go to my settings, and then I'm going to go to desktop and screensaver. And every time you take a screenshot, mine's defaulted to go to my desktop. So if you notice over here on the side, I have my screenshots there. So now all I'm going to do is I'm going to grab this one and I'm going to drag it over here. Notice the plus sign. And there you go. And now I'm going to close this out. And there it is. Wasn't that neat? Wasn't that easy? And we learned a lot of quick little features and, and skills and tools to use from Keynote. But really, it just makes things really, really easy. Again, we learned instant alpha, how to crop an image, how to, how to bring in an image from, from the web, how to add a text, how to sh uh, create a shadow and, and dimension on that. And of course, how to make it into, how to put it into your background as a wallpaper. I hope you guys like that. Uh, it was really fast. Um, it doesn't look great. I could do better, but for the sake of time, guys, uh, I hope you like it. Take a look at it. Mess with it. Hopefully, that will kind of motivate you to start creating your instructional resources because really, that's what all this is about, is how do I get to create tailored resources for my kiddos and the best way is is by you making them yourself. There will never be a textbook or a workbook, a consumable out there that you can literally grab a page out of, tear it, give it to the kids and expect to get those intentional instructional implications that are necessary for student academic success. You really can't other than you yourself creating it. So anyways, I hope you guys liked it. Uh, please Please uh, let me know if you'd like to learn more. If you like this video, but you want to go more into detail and you want to learn more skills and, and different tools, let me know. Leave me a comment. Uh, don't forget to subscribe, guys. I do this because I enjoy it, because it's fun. I'm not a professional. I'm sure there's a lot of other ways to go about doing things, but this is just the way I like to do things. Um, have a good evening, guys. We'll see you later, all right? Bye.